Turn your Bible this morning, your King James Version, to Song of Solomon, the second chapter. It's going to get ugly this morning. Mm -hmm. Brother Slee said sometimes it gets ugly. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the truth, though, still. Song of Solomon, the second chapter, and mm -hmm. the 15th verse. And you know, sometimes, Brother Bill, when you preach a message, when you hear somebody preach a message, maybe it comes across to your mind, you think, I wonder who he was preaching that to. <laughs> when we all leave here this morning, we, none of us won't have that question in our mind. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah, because this here hits every one of us. Hallelujah, right where we live. Song of Solomon, the second chapter, the 15th verse. The Bible says, Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines. All right. For our vines have tender grapes. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> At the time whenever this was written, and I guess not so much in America, but in other countries is still this way today, that the vineyard was very precious to them. Amen. Uh, especially in the land of Israel, their vineyards and keeping those crops safe and them nurturing their crops and their crops being coming to fruition and having the grapes from those was, was a big deal to them. Yeah. So they would many times build walls around their vineyard. Right. And you can find that, some of that in the Word of God, if you'll read some of it there about <coughs> vineyards. They take out the stones and the rocks and they nurture it. They took care of it. Anybody's ever had a garden? You know what I'm talking about. And uh, many times people would put a fence around their garden to keep out rabbits and squirrels and stuff like that, you know. Right. Because if you don't, then you go out there and something's been eating my carrots. Amen? Right. And it ain't me. Yeah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Same way with these. They wanted to keep the foxes out of their vineyard. Amen? Mm -hmm. So many times they would put the fence up around there, you know, and they would watch it to yeah. make sure. They say, you make sure you watch it make sure don't nothing get in. Now today, if you seen on the outskirts of that fence and you were just a walker by or just somebody didn't know anything about grapes or the way that they grew their vineyard or the things that cared, they cared about the most, you might see a little fox playing around and you might think, well, look how cute. Yes. Now he's just a little, he's just a little pup. I don't guess you call, I don't know if you call fox babies pups or not, but whatever they are, amen? He's just a little fox, so that's not a big deal, Brother Bill, amen? Now if you was walking by and you saw a big fox, you might think, uh-oh, we need to go warn the guy. There's a big fox out here. Mm -hmm. But if you, being unlearned about the way that they grew their vineyards and things, and their things that they were worried about, then you might not think a, a little fox was that big of a deal. Yeah. Amen? Come on. But the little foxes were a big deal. Right. Amen? Because many times when they could not get to where the grape was at, they'd kill the vine. Amen? Right. And if you ain't got no vine, you ain't got no grapes. That's right. Amen. Amen. I read something from a preacher who taught along these lines, and he was talking about that him and his wife had a little pup, and that his neighbors next door had a uh, grape arbor, and that he found the little pup one day digging at the foot of that grape arbor there on one end of it, and he was digging and playing and things, and he ran out there and got him, and he took him, you know, and, and told his neighbor he was sorry, and mm -hmm. wasn't long after that till that one end of the grape arbor died. Yeah. The grapevines on that end of the grape arbor died because the dog had damaged the roots, had damaged the base of the vines to where it couldn't bring forth any fruit. Right. And that's exactly what they were worried about. The little foxes that spoil a vine because of the tender grapes. Oh. And if the vine is spoiled, if the vine is damaged, it can bring forth no fruit. Yeah. And it wasn't by mistake that the Bible says little foxes Amen? Yeah. It doesn't mention the big ones. Of course the big ones can do damage. Come on. But see, little ones, even in, as best you could do with your fence, a lot of times little ones could find a place to sneak in. Right. Amen? Dig in under S same, Yeah, dig in under it or maybe find a little breach in the wall. You know, it's not big enough for a big fox. Amen? And if you were unlearned, if you walked around there and thought, well, there's just a little hole, that's not going to hurt anything. No big animals can get in here. Yeah. They wasn't just worried about the big ones. They were worried about the little animals that would get in there and gnaw at the vine and that would spoil the vine and it would damage the fact, damage the grapes because it couldn't bring forth any grapes. They had tender grapes on them. Amen? Amen. So little foxes might seem to you today harmless, but to them it was a big deal. 
Amen? The little foxes that creep into our lives today, many times we think that's not such a big deal. We even call them little sins. Amen? If there is such a thing, as if there is such a thing this morning. Amen? And let's look at some of these things this morning. Go with me to Galatians, the 5th chapter, and the 19th verse, and let's look at the works of the flesh. Galatians, the 5th chapter, the 19th verse. Talking about little foxes this morning that spoil the vine. Galatians, the 5th chapter, the 19th verse. The Bible says that the works of the flesh are manifest. That means you can't hide them. Oh. Amen? Right. When something is manifested, it's brought to light. Amen? Look up that word That's in the Greek. The works of flesh, you can't keep them hid. You can try for a while, but sooner or later, amen? I was having a discussion with a preacher one time, or he used to be a preacher, backslidden now, but don't ask him because he don't know it because I tried to convince him of that. But he don't know he's backslidden, amen? He believes he's went a little further down the road. Honey, he got plumb off the beaten path, amen? He then went off somewhere else. But anyway, he, he, uh, he called me everything but the devil, I guess. And uh, when he got through... You know, I, I said, well, I can tell that, that you're you're not, uh, you know, I'll pray for you, that you're, you're in bad shape spiritually. And, things. and he said, well, I'm glad you can peer deep into my soul and know what kind of spiritual condition I'm in. I didn't have to peer deep into his soul because his mouth gave him away. Amen? Sooner or later, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. Amen? And whenever you do that, then you know something ain't right. Something stinks in Denmark. Amen? There's something that needs to be dealt with because sooner or later... These little foxes, these little things that we don't think are big things, amen, but actually become big things. You know, little foxes grow up. Right. Amen. Right. They grow up. They get bigger. True. So listen to this. The works of the flesh are made manifest, meaning you can't hide them. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, yeah. uncleanness, lasciviousness, oh. idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, yeah. drunkenness, revelings, and such like. That means he ain't done. That's just sort of like saying, etc. Amen? There's more of them. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because if you habitually continue to do these things, sooner or later, they will rob you of your salvation. Come on, Amen? Come on. I ain't talking about works. I'm talking about drifting too far from the shore. Amen? Yeah. I'm talking about getting to the place where these little foxes that we talk about, and some of these, some of these we wouldn't consider little today. Amen? If you look at these, adultery, amen, murders, witchcraft. Some of those you think, man, them are big bad things. Yeah, but look at these other things that are in here in the same list. Wrath. Strife. Yeah. We don't think a whole lot about strife, do we? We don't think a whole lot about wrath. Amen? Right. We don't think a whole lot about hatred sometimes. Yeah. Right. Amen? We have feelings of hatred. We have attitudes of hatred <coughs> that we see no need to deal with them much because the same people we used to hate we still hate them today. Amen? Oh. The same people we used to be bitter at, we're still bitter at them today. We've got a grudge against people that we nurse like a mama nursing a newborn and instead of dealing with it and getting rid of it and saying, God, deliver me from it and get rid of this thing. I don't like the way I feel. I don't want to feel this way. We still feel the same way 10 years later about that person as we felt when it first started. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Exactly. Talk about bitterness. Absolutely. Strife. We don't think a whole lot about strife. We got family members that can't get along. We got church members that can't get along. We got pastors and preachers that can't get along. We we don't think much about some of these things. Come on, brother. But it's these things, brother Sleece, that will kill your vine and prevent you from bringing forth fruit in your life. Exactly. Amen. Absolutely. I would hope today, as I look out across this crowd of sanctified saints, Amen. I would hope today. That I speak that as I speak to us, we don't have any murderers in here. And I'm talking about in the sense that you took a gun this morning and shot somebody in the head. Amen. Oh. I would hope this morning that we don't have people here today that robbed the liquor store on their way to church this morning. 
I would hope today that we don't have someone that's in the middle of planning a big bank heist. Amen? Exactly. But as I look across the crowd, this maybe you, you know, the danger this morning to us, those of us who are at church every Sunday, those of us who are at Bible study, those of us who are at prayer meeting, those of us who are trying to live for the Lord to the best of our abilities, those things are not the problems for us most of the time, thank God. Amen? Wow. It's not the adultery like David was involved in. It's not murder like Cain did to his brother there in the field that day. It's not robbers as that, that, it, that it took the, uh, the, uh, the man that the Good Samaritan helped, that, that he fell among thieves. I would hope today that it's, that our problem today is not because we're sitting here as thieves. I would hope today that the problem that we're looking at is not because someone in here is a homosexual. Amen? I would hope today that it's not fornication that's our problem. Amen? I would hope today that it's not something that we would consider some big, grotesque thing. But it's the little things that cause us the problems around here. Amen? It's the little foxes that we've allowed to get inside of our walls of our vineyard and nibble at the vine to the pipe. And we wonder why we ain't bringing Fourth fruit. Check his check your garden and check out and see if you've allowed bitterness to come in and wrath to come in and malice to come in and hatred to come in and variance to come in and see if you've got some little foxes gnawing at your vine today, keeping you from bringing forth fruit. Amen. Come on. Oh my goodness. They spoil the vine. Amen. Absolutely. They spoil the vine. Yeah. So if it's not adultery. And it's not murder, and it's not homosexuality, and it's not fornication, as the Bible speaks out against all of them, Mr. President. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Oh, I wish somehow, some way, our president could tune in this morning. Amen. Yes, sir. Homosexuality is still an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. I realized that just recently we had the first American president in the history of the United States to come out and put his stamp of stamp of approval on gay marriage. I've got news for you. It don't matter who says it's okay. God says it ain't. Amen. And if it's still, if it's an abomination, then it's an abomination today. Exactly. It's a sin. You got it. It's abomination. Amen. They that do such thing will not inherit. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. That's good preach. So it's not so much the big things. Uh -huh. Amen. I hope today it's not drunkenness. Yeah. I hope today it's not blasphemy. Come on. I hope today that somewhere in your house there's not a little statue of Buddha. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's the little things that we don't think a whole lot about. Right. And I'm just calling them little things today just so we can bring it down to our level because these are not actual little things. Right. As Brother Slee says time, sometimes the little things ain't all that little. That's right. Same way it goes with this this morning. Amen? Come on. Bitterness. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Did you hear that? Amen. Root of bitterness. Bitterness leads to unforgiveness. Amen. Right. Amen. Exactly. You can't stay bitter at someone hollering you forgave them the whole time. Amen. That's true. Amen. That's bitterness true. leads to unforgiveness. Bitter bitterness leads to hate. Right. Amen? Yes. What might started out just as a root of bitterness and you didn't deal with it, you didn't get it under the blood, yes. you didn't go to the Father with it, amen, and say, forgive me, oh. wash me, cleanse me, I don't want to feel this way toward this person. <laughs> now it's, it's creeping its way to where it ain't no longer just bitterness. Okay. It's unforgiveness. It's hatred. And you cradle that thing around. Instead of dealing with it, instead of getting rid of it, you cradle that thing around, amen, Come on. and let it nurse Amen. Come on. Let it suck the strength out of you. Bitterness is a killer. Amen. That's true. Not just not just spiritually, it kills you physically. That's right. I told you a long time back when we preached on bitterness before that I read some reports from different doctors and stuff, and they they believe that it affects you physically. Right. Whenever you become bitter towards someone to the point to where you just hate them, Amen. it affects you physically. Right. We don't think a whole lot about bitterness. I don't have to have you right down today, but I guarantee you, everybody in here today has got somebody that sticks in your crawl. Right. 
Amen? They've done something. They did, they did something that you didn't like. They treated you bad. Amen. How many people have had anybody treat you bad before? Amen. Amen. How many people have ever had talk about you behind your back? Oh, wow. <clears throat> Amen. How many people liked it? How many people said, Lord, please send somebody in my life to stab me in the back? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Please let my friends run me down like a dog when I ain't around. Amen. Amen. Please, Lord, let somebody do me wrong today. Right. No, we don't pray for that kind of stuff. No. And when they do, that's whenever bitterness begins to creep in. All right. And it don't just affect you, it affects those around you. Why do you think He said, thereby many be defiled? Uh-huh. Your old bad attitude just don't affect you. That's right. It affects other people you come in contact amen, with. Amen. Exactly. People that got up in a good mood Absolutely. because you wasn't, now they ain't. That's right. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. How many times you got up on the right side of the bed, but your wife didn't? Oh, come on. Yeah. And you was feeling pretty good and pretty spiritual. Come on. Till her bad attitude rubbed off on you. All right. Amen. Amen. Same goes for you women. You got up on the good side of the bed, and your husband didn't. Exactly. You felt good till he opened his big mouth. Amen. Oh, and the minute he started grumbling and complaining, well, you didn't feel so good after all. Amen. 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 That root of bitterness, amen. amen. That complaining and grumbling, hallelujah, rubbed off on you. Amen. That's right. It's like a ripple effect. Amen. He got you in a bad mood. You went to work and you got somebody in a bad mood and they got somebody in a bad mood and they got somebody in a bad mood. All this exactly. because of that root of bitterness that defiles many. Right. It doesn't just stop at you. Amen. Come on. Leads to unforgiveness. We're talking about little foxes on, this morning. When it's, it, it, maybe somebody didn't treat you fair. Maybe somebody unloaded on you. Right. Have you ever had somebody just unload on you, brothers and ladies? That preacher I was telling you about unloaded on me. I'm still praying over him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unloaded on me. Yeah. You don't like that. You don't like when other people do you wrong, do you? No. Amen. My goodness. The little fox of bitterness can and will spoil the vine and destroy the fruit. Right. Remember that. Bitterness leads to unforgiveness. And before you know it, like I said, you're nursing a grudge like a mother nurses a newborn baby. Right. Amen? Amen. Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 1 says, Laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, now let's look at those things there in 1 Peter 2 and 1. These are some little foxes we don't think a lot about. Malice. It means a desire to injure somebody. Come on. <laughs> oh, I could preach this morning on that, good night, to the, to the husband and the wives. <laughs> I just want to choke him. Amen? A, a, a desire to injure somebody. That person that cuts you off in traffic. I ought to just shove you in the ditch. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I ought to just ram you in the back end. We're talking about little foxes this morning. Oh. Amen. Brother David goes in the bathrooms over there to school. Look at this mess they made. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what he says. Exactly. Amen. Look at this mess they made. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on one of them. I'd like to know who done this. Amen. Woo. <laughs> 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 And when we nurse those things, instead of saying, Lord, my, 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 yeah. help me with my attitude, amen, yeah. give me some more gratitude, hallelujah, help me, Lord, yeah. help me, Jesus. True. Listen to this, my goodness. That's probably why they has to go to church so much. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. The next one's gal. Here's another little fox. That means craftiness. It means deceit. Yeah. It means deceiving others by being crafty Amen. in order to obtain what you desire. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. When's tax deadline? Amen. April fifteenth. Doesn't pass, man. Right. Wonder how many people used gal to get by on their taxes. They didn't lie. They just wasn't completely honest. Right. How many times have you heard people say that? Amen. Well, I didn't lie to them. You better watch out. Yeah. That's a little fox. He's after your fruit. Yes, sir. Amen. It's true. He's after your fruit. Amen. Whoo, I lost some of them there. My goodness, I hope the IRS don't audit you. Craftiness, deceit, deceiving others. All right. See, subtle, crafty. Come on. Let's move on. Envy. Uh oh. 
That's a feeling of displeasure upon hearing of the prosperity of somebody else. All right. Anybody ever felt that way? Amen. Amen. I don't understand why they got blessed. Yeah. Amen. That's right. I, I don't understand why they got blessed and I didn't. Exactly. That's a little fox. Little fox trying to nibble at your vine. He's trying to spoil your fruit. That's it. Envy. To envy somebody. Amen. To be jealous of them. Come on. Amen. <coughs> Hypocrisy. Do I need to even touch on that this morning? That's an act. A stage player. Somebody that's living two lives. Somebody that's one way at church. And another way when they're out in the world. Amen. Amen. I call some Christians chameleons. It depends on what group they attach to. That's the color they change to. Amen? On, you see them with the crowd out in the world and they act like the crowd out in the world. You couldn't pick them up. You couldn't, you couldn't convict them of being a Christian if you arrested them for it. Amen? That's it. But you get them in church. Oh, glory to God in the highest. And the minute they leave, there's somebody else. Yeah. Hypocrisy. Right. That's a little, little fox. Exactly. Amen? Didn't look at you fine. Oh, I like this one. We may not go home today. Evil speaking. Yeah. Oh, Brother Billy, I don't do that. You know what falls into this category? Backbiting? Gossip? Anybody here been guilty of gossiping before? Amen. Amen. That's true. How many people ever got on the horn to share that prayer request? Come on. And really, you just needed to keep between you and the Lord because your brother confided in you. But it's burning a hole in your pocket. Exactly. You had to share it with somebody else. Amen. How many times you ever caught yourself on the telephone? Well, what do you think about so and so? Uh, what do you think about what they did? That's it. I wish you'd stop thinking about what you're doing. Amen. You Gossip, backbiting, stabbing somebody in the back, talking about them. Absolutely. Little foxes, evil speaking. Amen. How about rebellion? We don't think a lot about rebellion. Oh. All of us guilty of that. But the Bible says rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Just look at the life of Saul and see what rebellion gets you. Amen? Yeah. It starts out as something little, but it grows and it gets worse and it gets bigger. Amen? Amen? How about pride? No, How about pride this morning? Come on. The Bible says pride goes before destruction, the Holy Spirit before fall. Amen? Right. It must also be considered because pride, you know what it does? It demands that it's always right. Telling. Ain't none of us ever had any problem with that, have we? <laughs> Pride demands that it's always right. Yeah. I'm right. <coughs> You're not right. I can't be wrong. Yeah. We're wrong more times than we'll confess to. Amen. 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 Good. Pride. Absolutely. Pride will not allow you to take. Pride will not allow you to receive blessings that the Lord wants you to receive from others. Amen. That's true. Amen. How many times have you ever heard somebody don't take charity? No, I don't want that. Uh, don't You don't have to do that. I don't want you to do that. Try to keep you from receiving blessings that the Lord wants to say. How many, the Lord most of the time blesses you through other people. Right. Your pride stops that. Mm -hmm. Come on. Our pride will stop that. Amen? So it'll puff your... Why? Because you don't want to admit you need help. That's right. Amen? That's true. Because you're you. Right. You don't need no help. Amen. That's your stinking pride. Amen? That's a little fox. It's dangerous. Amen. It's dangerous. Amen? Absolutely. I thought about Brother Brad and how he was so sick and how that his fever was 104 and how that it, everything was out of whack. And I went over there to visit him. He's laying there in the hospital bed and, and weak and, and through it and everything. And, and I don't know if they... I think they decided it was a tick, but if they didn't, I got to thinking about a tick. Y'all seen that before? Yeah. That little bitty thing caused him all that trouble. Right. Amen. How many people remember last year whenever I had that piece of wood in my hand? Amen. Half inch. I had more pain out of that right there than anything that I've had in my 40 plus years. Amen. And all it was a little piece of wood. Yeah. Amen. That got up in here and wouldn't come out. Little things. Amen. What we talked about are little things. Amen. All right. Rebellion. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. That's what 1 Samuel 15 and 23 says. Amen. Amen. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. My goodness, how many people in here have been stubborn before? Amen. Amen. 
Saul's answer from the prophet Samuel was that he'd been rejected. Amen? Yeah. He had been rejected because he had rejected the word of the Lord. He was rejected also from being king of Israel. All right. Do you remember? Talk about jealousy for a minute. Do you remember whenever King David and them came back into town after having, you know, some victories? And the women were dancing and they were singing and they were shouting praises. And the Bible says that they were dancing, they were playing their music, and the women said something along these lines. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Yeah. And the Bible says Saul was wroth. And the same displeased him. Come on. If you go down to the next verse, it says, And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Mm. Jealousy. Exactly. We don't look at that as such a big thing. Matter of fact, most of us, it's in our lives and we ain't even dealt with it. Mm. Amen. 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 I know something about jealousy. I used to go to church and had 12 or 13 assistant pastors or associate pastors. Everybody getting mentioned but me. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> and it wasn't done on purpose. Well, it wasn't by them. It was by the Lord. Wanted me to deal with that. It ain't about me. All right. It ain't about me. Amen. The sooner you realize it ain't about you, the better off you're going to be. Amen. All right, it ain't about you. It ain't about your applaud. It ain't about you getting patted on the back. It ain't about somebody puffing you up. It's all about Jesus. Amen. And the sooner we realize that, the better off we'll be. That's right. Amen. It ain't about you. Amen. It ain't about you. But Saul thought it's all about him. Amen. And he eyed David. That jealousy, that little fox came into his life. And you know where that led? It led to hatred. It led to murder. And finally, it ended up in suicide whenever Saul took his own life. What about Cain? What led to the murder of his brother? The Bible says they both brought offerings to the Lord. They brought both brought offerings to the altar of the Lord. And the Bible says that God had respect unto one of the offerings. Amen. He had respect unto Abel's offering because it was a blood sacrifice. But he didn't have respect to Cain's offering because it was of his works. The fruit of the ground. It was the, it was the work of his own hands. Amen. It wasn't a blood sacrifice which was... What was was, was had, it, it was it was a, it had to be a blood sacrifice. Amen. That's it, that's what God required. Thank you, Sister Cindy. My mind couldn't grasp the whole of that great big college word required. Amen. And the Bible says that Cain was wroth. Right. Mm -hmm. He got mad. Mm -hmm. And listen, it could have stopped right there. Say, Brother Billy, how do you know? I read to you what Genesis four and five says. But unto Cain, but unto Cain and into his offering. He had no respect. Talking about God. Didn't accept it. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. Now he could have, this could have stopped all right here. It didn't have to lead to murder. It didn't have to lead to where it went. You see that, that bitterness that you have don't have to go no farther. That hatred that you have in your life today for somebody doesn't have to go any farther. It can be stopped right here. It can be stopped right now before it goes too long. You've still got fruit on the vine. The vine's still healthy enough to bring forth some fruit. But if you don't stop it right now, it's going to lead you down the path where you are a fruitless Christian and sooner or later you may not be a Christian at all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. I told you this was going to be ugly. Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And listen to what the Lord says to him. Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance falling? Mm. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? Yeah. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Right. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. God's telling him here. Right. What are you angry for? You can do well, and it'll be accepted. Come on. If you don't do well, it'll be rejected. It could have stopped right there. Cain could have said, Oh, forgive me. I, next time I'll be bringing the right kind of sacrifice. Forgive me for this feeling of anger. Forgive me for this root of bitterness that has came up in me. Amen. The word wroth means to glow or to grow warm or to blaze up with anger. Has anybody in here today ever got hot? Amen. I'm talking about in anger. I'm talking about mad at somebody. Amen. It's that then and there is the time to nip it in the bud, as Barney Fife used to say. Amen. And stop it right there before it grows any bigger. Come on. He could have. He could have stopped it right there. The Bible says he. The Bible teaches us, and in the wording that we have here, he could have stopped it right there. But you know what he did? Nursed. He nursed it. Mm -hmm. He rehearsed it. I guarantee you. That's what we do. 
Amen. We nurse it. We rehearse it. What's that mean, Brother Billy? We go over and over and over in our mind. Mm -hmm. And I say yeah. it, and she said it. Yeah. And I say it, and she, we nurse it. Mm -hmm. That's right. We chew on it, and as Sister Bell, bless her soul, used to say, the longer I chewed it, the bigger it got. <laughs> Amen. The longer you chew it, the bigger it gets. And you're going to choke on it if you don't spit it out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You're going to choke on it if you don't spit it out. Amen. So he doesn't do anything about it, Brother Sleaze. He just nurses it and it keeps getting worse until one day him and his brother are out in the field. I don't know what they were talking about. All I know is, is that Cain rose up and slew his brother. Right. Amen. Oh. And the next thing that we find, God's looking for Abel. Yeah. He says, Cain, where's your brother at? Mm. Am I my brother's keeper? Come on. <laughs> so, what? What does that got to do with me? And he says, because I hear his blood crying out from the ground. And you're the one that had the root of bitterness. You're the one that had the anger. You're the one that was, oh, my, my, my. I wonder how many times, I wonder how many times people that have been offended or been bitter and they lashed out against others that has caused those people that they lashed out against to walk away. And their spiritual Man got murdered. Yeah, right. there you go. That's yeah, it. Mm. yeah. I wonder if you could hear the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you could hear their blood crying out because you killed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we killed them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because of our anger. Right. Because of our bitterness. Mm -hmm. Right. Because of our malice. Because we were wroth and did not deal with it. Right. The Bible says King Saul was wroth with David. It says that Cain was wroth here. We see what that leads to. Amen. Little things ain't so little when you get to putting them under the microscope and figuring out what's going on. Amen. Amen. I know you might see something look like just a molecule, some little speck. But when you put it underneath the magnifying glass, there's a whole other world there. Amen. Stuff you can't see. Same way with these little things, these what we call... I'm going to put those in quotation mark little things. Amen. Yeah. There's a whole new, there's a whole big thing there that has to be dealt with. Amen. Amen. It's not so little after all. Galatians says that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Amen. You may think today, oh, it's all right. I'll go over here to this church. They just got a little bit of false doctrine. See, that's what Jesus warned the disciples. Amen. He told the disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Amen. Because that little bit of false doctrine, amen, that little bit of leaven will end up leavening the whole lump. Amen. I've seen people get involved in those kind of movements. And it was, well, there's a little bit out of whack, but that's all right. They teach some good things until finally they are completely out of whack spiritually. Amen. And they've lost what they had to begin with because a little leaven leavened their whole lump. Amen. Blessing Lord. My goodness. <clears throat> Someone has once said, if you watch your pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. <laughs> if we will watch the little foxes, yeah. the big ones will take care of themselves. Yeah, Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is with which that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So you minister to people with what come out of you, comes out of your mouth. Right. Amen. Amen. See and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now note the fruit that is in danger here that it's speaking of. Love, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. I also want you to notice this morning before we go that there's something else in danger, and that is the souls of the men and the women that are around us. The Bible says that a tree is known by the fruit. That it bears. Amen. 
That means that others will see in you something when you begin to bear the spiritual fruit that the Holy Spirit brings to pass in your life. We just read how that it says, grieve not the Spirit of God. Then it gives us a list of things that I believe today grieves the Spirit of God. Amen? Bitterness grieves the Spirit of God and stops the work of the fruit growing in your life. Amen? Malice grieves the Spirit of God. Hatred grieves the Spirit of God. Wrath grieves the Spirit of God today. And whenever we grieve the Spirit of God, we stop the Spirit of God from doing its work in our lives to bring forth fruit on our vines. Amen. These little foxes grieve the Spirit of God. They grieve the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. And it's not just us that are in danger, but it's those that our fruit would affect. Yeah. Amen. Come on. It's those that our fruit would affect. Right. And that is the lives of those that are around you. See, you're supposed to be the fruit bearer. Amen. You're supposed to be bearing fruit today. Right. Amen. That's true. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Yes, no law. That's it. You're supposed to be bearing fruit today. Amen. Amen. Right. Now don't get this next statement wrong because I still believe in women dressing like women and men dressing like men. Amen. I still believe in dressing holy. Right. I still believe that it don't it doesn't please God that you go I seen somebody yesterday at the dollar store. I still ain't sure they had on any clothes. <laughs> I turned so fast that I don't remember exactly what they was wearing, but it wasn't much. Amen. So I, I don't get me wrong, that ain't what this statement's meant for, but you can wear the longest sleeves, have the longest hair, wear the longest dress, and still not have no fruit. That's right. Yeah, really. Amen. Amen. Still be still being full of the joy and the peace and the meekness and the temperance, be full of bitterness. Right. Amen. Amen. Be full of bitterness. Amen. Amen. So many I tell you that because many times we say, Well, you'll know them with the fruit they bear. That's it. Yeah, the fruit they bear, not the clothes they wear. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Right. Not that that doesn't matter. It does Amen. I do believe it. I believe all of us should dress modest. Amen. Every one of us should dress that, that, that pleasing to the Lord. Amen. But we get this thing messed up. The fruit is not that. The fruit is the love, the joy, the peace, the temperance, the meekness. Amen. We get the cart before the horse. Yes, sir. We think that just because we dress the part makes it right. Oh, Jesus took care of that over there in the Gospels. Amen. Right. Whenever He said that the Pharisees, oh, you look good on the outside. You white and shiny and all cleaned up. But inside you are full of dead man's bones. Amen. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Talking about little foxes this morning. Yes, Amen. And it's our responsibility to bring forth fruit. Amen. To allow the Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruit in our lives and not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right. And our attitudes grieve the Spirit of God many times. Amen. Come on. Amen. Say it. Our attitudes grieve the Spirit of God many times. Exactly. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you've experienced it. I've experienced it. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 34, you can read this. I've got to hurry up. I've done reading too long. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not known the knowledge of God. That's sad, isn't it? Amen. That some people don't know God. Some people don't know about Jesus. But Paul didn't stop there. That verse is not finished, Brother Sleece. He said, For some have not the knowledge of God. And you know what his next words are? I speak this to your shame. It's your fault they don't know about God. Oh, God, help us not to ever have to stand in front of you and give an account for that. Right. Sister Martine sent me a poem this week that she had clipped out of a magazine or something and it said, You forgot about my soul. Mm -hmm. It's talking about a neighbor that lived next door and how that they fellowshiped, they had good times and that, but you forgot about my soul. Mm -hmm. Now the neighbor passed on and went to hell because they didn't share Jesus with them. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to put it in the newsletter. Lord. Hallelujah. But I lay this to your... What did he say? I lay this to your shame. I speak this to your shame. Amen? See, vines are easily spoiled and the grapes are tender. 
The fruit is tender and precious, more precious than gold this morning. Amen. And the little foxes that come in hinder the Spirit of God from bringing forth fruit in our life. And then when that fruit is brought forth, the Spirit of God does a work in someone else's life because they see what it's doing in yours. And whenever these little foxes stop your fruit from coming forth, not only does it grieve the Spirit of God and stop it from bringing forth the work in your life, but it stops it from bringing forth a work in other people's lives as well. And this is laid, this is spoken of to our shame. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. If you've got good friends today, people that you now know that you can't tell everybody you pass by, the door ain't always open for you to tell everybody that you pass by. And it ain't meant always for you to be the one to tell them. They'll accept it from Brother Slate, they won't accept it from me. Amen. God will make a way on those, but they're people that we fellowship, that we work with, that we have friends, and if they die without you telling them about Jesus, shame on you! Amen! Amen. Right. Shame on you! Shame on me! Absolutely. Amen! Hallelujah! I'm closing. The little foxes, they ruin the tender fruit of the vine. The Holy Spirit that brings forth the fruit. It hinders it. It stops it. You're a living testimony today. Amen? Amen. Think about that the next time you throw your fit in Walmart. Yeah. Amen? I saw somebody the other day at McDonald's and I was wearing my hat, my Jesus hat. And he said, I like your sermon. And it first took me off guard. I thought it must have heard me preach or something. And he pointed to my hat. Oh. Yeah. Amen? He probably didn't know he was a preacher. <clears throat> right. Yeah, he didn't know me from Adam. But he knew the Jesus that was on the hat. Amen? Oh. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and he, oh, and he said, he said those are great witness tools. He said, I wear them all the time. He said, I've given away a lot of them and stuff. And I walked away thinking, they are great witness tools. They also keep you in check many times. Right. There are times that my face rolls up, Brother Place, and I wanted to get angry, but I thought, hey, what's it going to look like? Here I stand in line at Walmart, and I got I love Jesus on my hat. It's on the back. It's on the front. It's up here, down under. And here I am throwing a fit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. forgive me, Lord. Amen. Right. So if you want to have something to help you live a little better, get you a Jesus hat and put it on and stay conscious of the fact that you got His name on your hat there. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right. Watch out for the little foxes. Amen. They will spoil your vine. Hallelujah. Anybody else this morning have something before we go?